Hello everyone, I am Dr. Deepika Malik. Today we are back with the next session of electron microscopy. In previous section we have discussed transmission electron microscope and in this session we'll discuss scanning electron microscope also known as SEM. SEM operates on the principle of scanning a focused electron beam across the surface of a specimen and detecting various signals generated by interactions between the electrons and the specimen. SEM provides detailed topographical and compositional information about specimen's surface. Both secondary electrons and backscattered electrons are generated during SEM imaging. They serve different purposes. Here you can see in the diagram, the electron beam from the electron source passes through the condenser lenses which condense it towards the specimen and from the specimen there is generation of secondary electrons and backscattered electrons for which we have different detectors. This is the detector for secondary electrons and this is the detector for backscattered electrons. Secondary electrons are primarily used for surface topography and morphological studies offering high resolution imaging of surface features. Whereas backscattered electrons are employed for compositional analysis and can reveal information about the elemental composition and distribution within the specimen. Now let's see what is the major difference between secondary electrons and backscattered electrons. Secondary electrons are generated when high energy primary electrons from the electron beam collide with atoms in the topmost layer of the specimen's surface. Whereas backscattered electrons are produced when primary electrons from the electron beam interact with the nuclei of the specimen's atoms. These electrons scatter backward in the direction of these electron beams. Secondary electrons originate from the specimen's surface and represent the electrons that are ejected from the outermost atomic shells of the specimen's atoms during the interactions. Whereas backscattered electrons originate from within the specimen, typically from deeper layers, as the result from interaction with the specimen's atomic nuclei. Secondary electrons are primarily used for imaging the specimen's topography and surface features. They provide detailed information about surface roughness and texture. Backscattered electrons are used for compositional imaging and can provide information about variations in the specimen's atomic number or elemental composition. They are particularly useful for distinguishing regions with different material compositions. Contrast. Secondary electron images typically have a high contrast with brighter areas corresponding to regions where more secondary electrons are emitted, example raised surface features and darker areas corresponding to regions with fewer secondary electron emissions, example depressions or voids. Whereas backscattered electron images exhibit compositional contrast with regions of higher atomic number appearing brighter and regions with lower atomic number appearing darker. This contrast allows for the identification of different materials within the specimen. Secondary electrons imaging provides excellent lateral or horizontal resolution making it suitable for studying fine surface details. Backscattered electron imaging provides a good lateral resolution although it may not be as high as secondary electron imaging. The lateral resolution depends on the electron beam energy and specimen properties. Secondary electrons do not carry information about the specimen's composition Whereas backscattered electrons can provide information about the specimen's composition, making them valuable for material analysis and identifying phases or elements within a sample. Now let us discuss sample preparation for SEM. Properly prepared samples ensure that the surface features are well preserved and can be imaged effectively. Here are the general steps for sample preparation for SEM. Fixation if necessary. If your sample is biological or contains volatile components, consider fixation to preserve the structure. Common fixatives include glutaldehyde or formaldehyde. Dehydration. Dehydrate the sample to remove moisture which can cause charging and reduce image quality. Gradually replace water with a series of increasing ethanol concentration, example 30%, 50%, 70%, 90% and finally 100% or another suitable solvent. 
Allow the sample to dry completely. Drying. It is done in order to be compatible with the vacuum in the microscope. The presence of water molecules will disturb the vacuum and with it the imaging. Drying can be done in air. Water has a high surface tension to air, crossing the interfaces from liquid to gaseous phase during evaporation. The tangential forces caused by the surface tension can have an effect on the nano and microstructures of the specimen. To overcome this, we can dry at critical point. At the critical point, physical characteristics of liquid and gaseous are not distinguishable. Compounds which are in the critical point can be converted into the liquid or gaseous phase without crossing the interfaces between liquid and gaseous, avoiding the damaging effects. This method removes all of the water from the specimen instantly and avoids surface tension or capillary forces in the drying processes, thereby avoiding artifacts of drying. In some cases, critical point drying can be used to prevent sample shrinkage and preserve surface features during the drying process. Mounting Attach the sample to a specimen stub or holder made of aluminium using a suitable adhesive such as conductive carbon tape or epoxy resin. Ensure that the sample is securely mounted and won't dislodge during analysis. Coating if necessary. Some SEM samples are coated with a conductive layer to reduce charging and enhance imaging. Common coating materials include gold, gold palladium or platinum. Contrast in the electron microscope depends on atomic number. The higher the atomic number, the greater the scattering and the contrast. Thus, heavy metals are used to add contrast. Label structures appear black or electron dense in the image. Trimming and cross-sectioning if necessary. If the sample is large or irregularly shaped, trim it to manageable size using a precision cutting tool. For material analysis or studying internal structures, consider cross-sectioning the sample. Ensure that the sample surface is free from contaminants and loose particles. Use pressurized air or a gentle brush to remove any debris. Sample labeling, which is again optional. If you are working with multiple samples, consider labeling each one to keep track of their identities and orientations. SEM chamber. Load the prepared sample into the SEM chamber, ensuring that it is securely mounted on the specimen stage. Applications of SEM. Material size. Surface morphology, SEM is used to examine the surface topography, roughness and texture of materials including metals, ceramics, polymers and composites. Material defects, SEM helps identify and analyze defects, cracks and structural imperfections in materials. Failure analysis, SEM is employed to investigate the causes of material failures and manufacturing defects. Nanotechnology, nanomaterial characterization, SEM is crucial for characterizing nanoparticles, nanowires and nanostructures providing information on size, shape and distribution. Nanofabrication, SEM is used for quality control and imaging during the fabrication of nanoscale devices. Semiconductor industry, integrated circuits, SEM is used to inspect semiconductor devices, analyze defects and verify the quality of semiconductor materials. Photolithography SEM helps in optimizing photolithographic processes used in semiconductor manufacturing. Biology and Life Sciences Cell Biology SEM is used to visualize the surface morphology and structure of cells and tissues. Microorganisms SEM is employed to study microorganisms, bacteria, viruses and other biological specimens. Botany SEM aids in studying the surface features of plants including leaves, pollens and seeds. Geology and Earth Sciences Mineralogy SEM is used to analyze minerals, rocks and sediments providing information on mineral composition and texture. Paleontology SEM helps in the study of fossils and ancient organisms by revealing Fine surface details. Environmental science, air quality monitoring, SEM is used to analyze airborne particles, pollutants and aerosols in environmental samples. Soil and sediment analysis, SEM aids in studying soil structure and the composition of sedimentary materials. 
archaeology and cultural heritage, artifacts analysis. SEM is employed to examine archaeological artifacts, ceramics and historical objects for material composition and preservation. Forensic Science SEM assists in analysis of trace evidences such as fibers, hair, gunshot residues and tool marks in criminal investigations. Entomology, insect morphology, SEM is used to study the fine structures such as antennae, wings and mouth parts of insects. Art and conservation, art restoration, SEM is employed to analyze pigments, coatings and the microscopic structure of artworks, aiding in art restoration and preservation. Education and research, SEM is a valuable tool in educational institutions and research laboratories for training and scientific investigations across various disciplines. The next slide shows the basic and the major differences between SEM and TEM. Imaging mode. In TEM, electron beam passes through the sample. In SEM, electron beam scans over the surface of the sample. Type of electrons generated. TEM images are formed by transmitted electrons that pass through the specimen. Whereas SEM images are formed by secondary electrons and backscattered electrons generated by interaction between the electron beam and the sample surface. Resolution TEM offers extremely high resolution, whereas SEM offers comparatively low resolution due to limited depth information. Sample thickness TEM requires specimens to be very thin, typically 50 to 100 nanometers thick, to allow electrons to pass through. Whereas SEM can accommodate thicker specimens, typically up to a fewer millimeters, making it suitable for bulk samples. Sample preparation TEM sample preparation often involves complex techniques like ultra microtomy to create ultra thin sections. SEM sample preparation is generally less complex than TEM and often involves cleaning, drying, and mounting on SEM stubs. Conductive coating may be applied to reduce charging effects. Specimen mounting. In TEM, thin films are placed on copper grids, whereas in SEM, the sample is placed on aluminum stubs. Image type. TEM generates 2D-like images, whereas SEM generates 3D images. Magnification power. TEM shows magnification of up to 5 lakh times, whereas SEM shows of roughly 1 lakh times. Applications. TEM is ideal for studying the internal structure of specimen at the nanoscale. Common applications include observation of subcellular structures, nanoparticles, crystal lattices, and atomic arrangements. Whereas SEM excels in surface imaging, making it valuable for examining topographical features, surface morphology of cells or small organisms, fracture surfaces, and compositional information. Applications range from materials characterization and quality control to geological studies and forensic analysis. So with this, we complete the topic of electron microscopy. In the next session, we'll discuss the differences between bright field, dark field, fluorescence and electron microscopy.